Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today uh, I had a highly requested video, so I wanted to go ahead and kind of uh, further explain a little bit of what I'm doing with my atlas and my shaping strats. And a big part of it is how I am sustaining maps uh, in the current league, uh, which is the, what is a Hardcore Harbinger? So for my atlas, just to briefly go over it, uh, we currently have... I guess the ones that matter, Dunes is my tier 10, which I've been pretty happy with it. Uh, the density is pretty okay, the boss is pretty easy. I haven't really had much issues or much issues with it. <clears throat> then I've got T11 as my shaped race course. Uh, I have noticed one thing from race course that it's got a very nice map layout. Uh, I don't think race course actually has that crazy of density to be completely honest, but due to the fact that it's got three bosses, I really do feel that the returns from race course are just so amazing compared to other maps due to the multiple boss mechanic. I don't know if that's a placebo effect, but I can assure you that I have gotten so much map return out of them. Now, I haven't actually shaped the T12 yet. I shaped Ashenwood before when I was playing Breach League, um, and it was pretty okay. I just kind of got annoyed with it because like Shore was so much better than Ashenwood and Strand just was really good back then. I may consider shaping Ashenwood because I do feel that race course has been slacking a little bit for me and I've been getting already pretty great returns. So this is something to really think about. I do have a tier 13 shaped which is my bog and I've only ran two, two bogs so far and uh, I've gotten good return and I really like the layout. I love the boss of bog so bog is probably my go to T13 map. As for T14 and 15, I haven't really decided yet. I'll probably skip a 14 and 15, I'm not really too sure. My atlas completion is 74 at the moment. So let's talk about a little bit of how to sustain your maps. So step one is you want to make sure you have every map from tier one to nine completed on your atlas. That is just the basic, the basic thing to get done. And the reason why is you're not really running tier nine maps uh, later on into the league. It just doesn't really make much sense, right? Unless you're trying to build up a T10 and T11 map pool, in which case you're probably playing a new character. So step one, do that because that'll increase your completed bonus objective, which allows for a plus two drop, which is really good because plus two basically means if you've got a minus one, it could become a plus one. Does that make sense? I think that's how it works. I don't know specifically exactly how this thing works. I don't know if it can roll off of bosses or just regular mobs. Uh, but in general, I've noticed that getting it to at least 50% seems to be a good spot to be. Again, that's just like a complete number that I've, random number that I've thrown out, but I've noticed that typically when I get to about 50% on my Atlas, I notice my plus twos a lot more frequently. Everyone's gonna kind of tell you a different thing. Um, in the end though, you wanna try to get this number as high as possible before you start kind of hurting your own map pool. Does that make sense? So you wanna basically run every unique map that's cheap because each unique map will give you 1% towards your bonus objective completion. Um, so for example, I've done like Care Blade, I've done Oba's Curse Trove, Poor Joys, uh, Death and Taxes, Maelstrom of Chaos, Wakataka Tikituku, uh, Acton's Nightmare. I still have to do Vinktar Square and I have to purchase an Olmex. Another cool thing that I'm sure you guys know from previously is Care Blade is actually a very good map to run. And the reason why it's such a good map to run is because the boss at the end does drop an additional amount of maps, which means that since it's a boss, it's got plus two base level, you can actually get like tier 11s and tier 12s out of this map uh, quite frequently, especially based off of your luck. So consider buying into Care Blades if they're not too expensive, and this can help you get a shaped map pool started. So in terms of uh, basically how I started sustaining, I wanna go through the basics. So the first thing that I did is I have a yellow map pool right here. So I kept all of my tier nines for myself, right? So I sorted all my tier nines, and this is even like into my deep 80s, I was running tier nines. I basically spam ran all my tier nines and didn't stop. Doesn't matter what the map is. I personally hate temple, so I didn't run that. And I ran pretty much every other map. Now this, this what I'm telling you guys can be applied to pretty much every single league. Now, while you're doing your tier nines, you wanna make sure that you can shape a tier 10 map as soon as you can and a tier 11 map as soon as you can. And the reason why is when you're in a tier nine map, the blue mobs can drop a plus one and the bosses can drop a plus two. So you wanna make sure that the plus one and plus two doesn't roll back to a nine because if you don't have a tier 10 or tier 11 map, it's gonna roll back to tier nine, right? So with our shape strategy, we have race course as our 11 and dunes as our T9. So by spam running your tier nines, you are naturally going to build up a tier 10 pool. 
Once you get pissed off and don't feel like running tier 9s anymore, typically when you have maybe 10, 15, 20 shaped dunes, or whatever map it is that you prefer, go ahead and start running your dunes. Now, it's important, in my opinion, that when you are running your maps, you want to alk them and get at least one pack size roll and or one magic density roll. So, like, for example, if I were to alk this, this map has a pack size of 10%. To me, it's runnable. It's good. No problem. So let's go down the rest of them and I'll show you I'll show you maps that I would personally re-roll. So this has 14% pack size and 30% more magic monsters. Sounds good to me. This is 32% pack size, looks good. This is 29% pack size with with rare mobs, very good. This is 10% pack size with sea witches, no problem. Uh, this okay, here's a map that I would re-roll. So this map has nothing at all for me for map returns. Um, it doesn't have rare mobs, it doesn't have magic mobs, it doesn't have a pack size, and there's one more mod that I didn't, I didn't uh, basically say, which is double boss. Twin bosses, I feel, do have quite a significant increase on returns, uh, especially when running race course. I know I've gotten, I think, three race course maps off the bosses, plus a shaped dunes before, when I had it twin, so that would be six bosses. So here's an example of something I would re-roll, and I do this logic for pretty much everything. Now, I didn't start chiseling my maps until my T11s, uh, so I would chisel this and alk it, for example, and this, this is a map actually I could run, even though, as I said before, it doesn't have, uh, it doesn't have magic mobs or pack size, I want to show you guys an example of why I would still say, like, this is an okay map to run. So let me just open this for you guys. Now, the same thing applies to your bogs. Um, the same strategy to basically chisel from T11 plus, same with your bogs. One other thing is I do use one sextant on my race course right here, which hits it. I haven't used any sextants on my dunes. Uh, I am doing a little bit of a sextant block method right here. I don't really know if it's worth it. I don't really want to explain this too much. It's kind of complicated, but just a simple rundown. Sextant blocking is essentially when you would apply sextants that would not hit your map, but would hit your adjacent maps because with this, this says you get 30% increased quantity of items found in unidentified maps, right? We never run unidentified maps. So because we don't run unidentified maps, we never want this to apply to our race course. So this this map already has the uh, unidentified role, so it cannot apply to here. Does that sort of make sense? And you can do that to sextant block pretty much all around your entire tree. Um, but I've, I haven't really done too much with that. So let's go ahead and jump into this race course. And I want to go ahead and just jump right on into the bosses and show you guys. And we'll see if we get lucky or just whatever with our map drops. Alright, so here's our double boss. So we got six bosses. And there's a shape bog. There you go. We got returns. That's actually a plus two, so it's no problem. And that's why I really like race course personally. You know, this isn't a scripted video. You guys know I don't edit shit. I'm too lazy for that. It's just honestly, I have felt that with the with the twin mod on race course, you pretty much almost always get return. I would say it's more than a 50% chance for me to get return just based off the bosses. And this is kind of where I came up with the conclusion that. It doesn't always have the best of density. This is actually like pretty good right now compared to what it normally has. Uh, but I typically would say I get, I think I get majority of my returns off my map bosses, where previously in leagues, I would get most of my return off the mobs rather than the map bosses. This is why I've been considering shaping Ashenwood because if I get more XP out of there, I'll probably just run that and then just use race course to basically build up my map pool again. One other thing to note that I know a lot of people don't like to do or just don't even know about it or think about it is make sure you open up chests if you walk by them. In race course, you don't have to worry about the uh, like the armor trunks and the weapon things. Those don't really give you anything. But the chests do. Uh, the chests always have a chance at map return. So that's why I like to open them. It's not really common. I mean, I would probably say per race course, I'll find maybe... Maybe one map out of out of ten maps that I run by opening the trunks. It's not like a crazy amount, but I mean, hey, dude, if you can get ten percent refund back, why not go for it? 
So I believe that pretty much covers a uh, majority of it. I will say as well, there are a couple methods that I do on top of that. So say like, say you were to roll a really good map, like, um, do I have a really good map? I guess this is okay. Like anything with like 30% pack size, right? Or even maybe even more if you get like 40% pack size, I would recommend for you guys to use a dusk, a dawn, and a noon. Where is it? And you put them inside the map device with the map, and I believe that adds bonus qual or quantity. And then I would personally bloodlines it as well for three chaos. Now you should not do that on low tier maps because if the map doesn't even like cost three chaos, do you really want to spend three chaos on the map? So make sure you you really think about that. Um, and in terms of alking maps, I started alking my yellow maps. Whenever really you feel comfortable running them, a lot of this does have to do with your build. You know, if you don't feel comfortable with doing something, don't follow the guide and do it just because the person does it. It's important to really get a feel of your build and understand the content that you can take it into. Because one big thing about this is like, if you're spending a bunch of currency continuously scour alking, scour alking, scour alking because your build can't do those mods, maybe it's simply better for you to just run the map magic, for example, and run it like that. Like, here you go, I, I transmuted one time and got 16% pack size. Like, that's that's arguably, like, okay, it's not really that bad. So make sure you take those things into consideration. Anyway, that's pretty much about it. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Uh, just as a quick sneak peek to you guys, uh, I want to show you this for those who have waited. Uh, I am actually going to be creating a new build at some point in time, potentially. I don't know if it's going to be tomorrow. I don't know if it's going to be in two weeks. But I did have an idea for a trapper, uh, which is going to be a tinker skin trapper, probably played as an elementalist, with crit, uh, frost bomb, and ice trap. Frost bomb as my AoE, since added cold recently got buffs, so this has a 130% damage effectiveness, so added cold will scale very well with this, especially t uh, paired with a Terran shiver. Uh, so this is something I'm going to try out uh, in the near future, and um, we'll talk about that more maybe in another video once I've got like some more stuff uh, compiled for it. Anyway, though, like I said before, hope you guys enjoyed yourself. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Remember, you can always catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. Hope you guys had a wonderful time for the 19th time, and I'll see you boys all tomorrow. Take care, everybody.